Hey there, welcome to Penn Central 99's channel. Today we're at the workbench because I'm going to be replacing and upgrading the uh, lights in my Atherin Genesis SD70 ACE. Um, as you know, Atherin uses incandescent bulbs in their uh, locomotives. They have a tendency to burn out, and at some point you're going to need to replace them or change them out altogether. So today I'm going to change them out to LEDs. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here's a before shot, and as you can see, one of the two headlights is already burned out. You can see this ditch light is already burned out, um, and even with this ditch light illuminated, it doesn't uh, quite have the brightness that I'm looking for when it comes to a um, lighting setup. So let's go ahead and uh, get this stuff upgraded. I received the surface mount LEDs in the mail the other day and you can see from the packing slip here where I got these from. Uh, these are from HDA Bottle Works and here's their website and their address. Uh, the particular model that or brand that, that I got from them, you can see here that these are the surface mount warm white uh, LEDs. Their model number is 0805. Um, you can see over here uh, the total for 12 of them was 1188. These things were 99 cents a piece. They come with pre-wired and with the resistor already on them. So for 99 cents a piece with all the work already done, I don't think I could beat it. Even though I've got surface mount LEDs that I could do on my own, the size of these, and I'll show you how small they are um, here in a minute, but between the size already pre-wired with the resistor for 99 cents, I couldn't beat that. Now they charge us a uh, flat $6 for shipping, so for a dozen of them, I don't think that's a bad price. So let me get a battery hooked up to uh, this LED and I'll show you how small and how bright it is. Okay, to give you an idea of how small these LEDs are, um, this is an actual penny. You can't make this up, everybody's got one in their pocket. This is the LED. You can see how small that is? So like I say, for pre-wired with the resistor, for 99 cents, I don't think I could beat it. So let me give you an idea of what this uh, looks like hooked up to a 9 volt battery. Um, you just can't beat how bright these things are. Watch this. I mean, for, for such a small LED, the brightness of that is just phenomenal. And that's going to look good as my dish lights. Okay, the first thing we need to do is get this LED into these ditch light housings. Uh, since my ditch light housings were already broke off the front of the locomotive, it can only get better. Uh, so what I did is the opening for the light in the housing was just a little bit smaller than that um, LED. I took a drill bit and opened it up. Now, as you can see on the back side here, I split the housing just a little bit. So it's split open just a little bit. You can see that on this one pretty good. I got that split open, but that's not a problem because what we're going to do is when I get done and mounting that in there to secure it but not make it permanent in place, I'm going to use some liquid tape. Um, to hold it in place plus it should help with the over light or the stray lighting coming out of that housing. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got the LEDs inside the ditch light housings and basically what I did is I coated the, uh, the back of the ditch light housing with some of that electrical uh, liquid, liquid tape. Um, I have black of course, I'm still using a 9 volt battery to test these things out, but uh, you can see the, uh, the light that these things put out, so I'm pretty satisfied with that. I think I'm going to leave this sit overnight and let that uh, liquid tape set so I have uh, something solid to work with tomorrow when I uh, mount it on the front of the locomotive. But that's looking pretty good so far. The next step in the process is to get the ditch lights back into the holes in the uh, the front of the chassis for the locomotive so that we can uh, get it hooked up to the decoder. Uh, but what I need to do is because uh, these holes are smaller than uh, the resistors for the lights, I'm just going to cut the resistor out. I'm going to leave enough room so that I can solder it back together. And when I set the ditch light in there, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to you know use my standard liquid tape that you can get at any hardware store. 
I'm going to dab a little bit of it onto the bottom of the ditch light housing uh, so that way it, when it sits in there it will uh, help seed it kind of like glue but at the same time if I need to remove it I can because this liquid tape once it dries is still flexible and can be removed uh, plus that should help uh, eliminate uh, some of the uh, stray light that comes out from the bottom of the housing. Okay, let's hook it up to a 9 volt battery to see what it looks like. And there they are. Headlights and dish lights all lit up. LED. Of course it's not perfect, but um, I think that looks pretty good. The ditch lights have been mounted back up to the uh, the front of the locomotive. I just have the, the shell upside down. Um, but you can see the ditch lights are mounted right here. I've got the wire fed through the uh, the front of the loco and into the body. Now all we need to do is uh, solder the wires up to the uh, decoder and uh, we should be ready to go. Okay, let's go ahead and turn these lights on and see what happens. Hey, okay, here's the headlights. And dim. Bright. Ditch lights. Uh, let's see what they do when you uh, sound the horn. Well, I would say that uh, PC 1073 is back in business. Well, that pretty much does it for this video. I know most of the video kind of surfaced around or focused around the ditch lights. And as a reminder and a recap, um, I upgraded the headlights uh, using my other method in my other video uh, by using a 3 millimeter bulb and two fiber optic tubes to transfer that light to the front headlight assembly. So like I say, just a reminder, the headlights were done like previously. That pretty much does it for this video. Thanks for watching.